Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. I wasn't ready for the Georgia summer weather, but thankfully Raycon has my back. They don't keep me cool, but their everyday E25 lineup are quality Bluetooth earbuds that are about half the price compared to other premium earbuds out there. They sound just as good and there's a bunch of colors to pick from. So that's cool. Get the red ones. I always recommend the red ones and their sleek compact design fits nice in the ears, giving you a great noise isolating fit. And I mean that shake your head as much as you want and they ain't falling off. I'm going to give myself a concussion doing that one day. I swear to God. Musicians and celebrities get behind them too. I'll probably be mentioning Melissa Etheridge, Snoop Dogg, Rich the Kid, and Mike Tyson even after they pass away. I'm sure Ghost can rock Raycons too. They last around six hours on a single charge, but the carrying case itself can be charged to give you more hours of playtime on the go. Use them during your next Uber drive to avoid unwanted conversation or groceries when you're shopping into aisles unknown. I don't know any of these products. And Raycon is offering all my viewers a great deal. Click the link in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash some call me giant to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. There's also a 45 day free return policy so you can make sure you find the right pair for yourself without breaking the bank. And I mean this every single time I do one of these, but thank you so much for supporting my channel. Now let's continue on with the show. Whoa, wait a minute there. I'm paying the price for the Final Fantasy 3 video. Nah, nah, you're fine. Hey, John. Oh, hey, Uncle. Uh, what can I do for you? I figure you're taking a break from Final Fantasy right now? Yeah, just for a little bit. We're heading into the summer. I got two anniversaries to celebrate, so. Right, right, right. But, John. Come on. Yes. You can't mention Mystic Quest in the last video and not expect me to tell you to review it. God now. damn it, I knew you were going to say that. Look, I know I said this was going to be a video for another day, but not the next day, you know? John, as an American, the audience that that game was designed for, it is your civic duty to review Mystic Quest and see if it did its job. Uncle, please. Go on. The other Final Fantasies aren't going anywhere. Yeah, neither is this game. See? You're already reviewing it. Have a good day, Uncle. And be sure to check out my streams over on twitch.tv slash Uncle Silver. Oh, you fucking chill. <laughs> Raycon, hit me up. Fucker. Okay, sure, why not? Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. You've probably seen this game a couple of times in this cesspool YouTube calls a platform, but let's assume you haven't and get you up to speed. In the early 90s, the RPG genre over in Western markets was incredibly niche. Unless it was something that already had a reputation, like Dungeons & Dragons, it was unlikely your average console gamer knew what the hell a saga, Shining Force, or Fantasy Star was. Final Fantasy was only two games over here in 1992, and those two games, while received fondly, were not financial juggernauts. If you remember what I said about the original North American release of Final Fantasy IV, how it neutered and simplified some gameplay elements, that was mainly to appeal to casual newcomers in the West who might have found a typical JRPG a little daunting. And the thing is, it sort of worked. It kept players glued to their screens until the credits rolled. Again, Final Fantasy IV wasn't the second coming of Christ when it launched in America, but the reception was great and the sales weren't terrible. So Square, I guess figuring the lower difficulty was a step in the right direction, went and greenlit a Final Fantasy that would be specifically tailored to the audience they thought needed even more hand-holding, and thus Final Fantasy Mystic Quest was created. It's even called Final Fantasy USA in Japan. Square's entry-level role-playing adventure from the world's best-selling RPG series if Japan was most most of the world they're referring to here. Huh, for sale and use in the USA, Canada, and Mexico only? Wait, hold on, does this mean that the Japanese and European release is illegal? And, oh god, this prologue in the back of the box, oh man. Think you can save the world? Here's your chance to play the world's first role-playing game for the entry-level player. I mean, I thought Final Fantasy IV already did that and then some. The planet is dying, cold winds blow, fires rage, trees are withering, in other words, it's brutal out there. Thanks, I got that. Only you can stop the Dark King from consuming the light from the crystals of Earth, but don't think it'll be a walk in the park. Well, wait, is this an entry-level game or not? You're up against the sleaziest of slime bags, the evilest of ecto scum. We're talking serious monsters here. This isn't your basic shoot the smithereens kitty game either. What the fuck? This is a kitty game. The balls on these folks. You'll have to think your way out of some tough spots. No, you won't. Think you can handle all that? I would hope so. It's a fucking entry-level RPG. And you know what? That makes for a good plot summary. No spoiler bumper here. There is nothing really to spoil. Okay, yeah, there's a premise, but like the original Final Fantasy, it doesn't go much beyond that. The hero of this game is Benjamin, though you can name him whatever you want. The game starts with him hightailing it out of his village, which just went under from a powerful earthquake. Damn, lost his village and likely his family in the opening minute of the game? I wonder how that's going to play into his character development as the game progresses. It's never brought up again. 
Maybe it's because he secretly hated his parents for his measly 2 GPL allowance a month. Maybe if Ben's town raised the minimum wage, it would have fallen victim to an act of God. Alright then, shortly after, Ben meets with this mysterious old man who tells him that he's the chosen one, and then it's up to him to reclaim the planet's four crystals. And for what it's worth, I actually like how Mystic Quest takes the piss out of certain RPG tropes. There's a girl you recruit early on named Kaylee who gets poisoned by a monster, and she collapses but she still talks to the player and does this little dramatic spin to fall back down as if she's temporarily breaking the script to get you in the right direction. Or how the old man ensures that Ben is the hero he's looking for, and that when Ben kills this big monster the old man basically says, oh shit you really are the chosen one, to which Ben says, but I thought that's what you said, to which the old man retorts, it was more of a guess. I like that, as well as Ben's little shoulder shrug here that happens whenever a womp womp moment happens, and whatever the hell he's doing here after waking up from a nap. What the hell is that? Dabbing? Mystic Quest evokes a lighthearted tone, it can be pretty funny with what little dialogue there is. This was the first Final Fantasy where Ted Woosley oversaw the translation, he would also do Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger to mention that game for the 16th time, and I know his work can be seen as a little polarizing. For instance, this bird here is supposed to be called a phoenix, but the English version calls them hot wings. I fucking love that. That's what I'm calling phoenix from now on and you can't change my mind. Besides that I think Mr. Woolsey did alright here, it looks like he was having fun, I can respect that. But every other story beat there is, whenever there is a story beat, is some of the most generic Wonder Bread variety storytelling you can find in any RPG. And yes, that is in some regard the entire point of Mystic Quest, but it's too simple, it's too straightforward, it gets too formulaic far too quickly. Nothing of any real worth happens besides Ben reclaiming the crystals. No character development for him or any of the extra party members you temporarily recruit. Kaylee, Phoebe, Ruben, Tristan, they're all cut from the same cloth, only distinguishable from their weapon of choice and their character design. Tristan is oddly the only character to have his own theme though, and I think it's something he plays out loud on a boombox because Ben looks around as if he knows Tristan is on the way when his music starts playing. Uh, as generic as it is, there is something about the Benjamin and Phoebe dynamic I fuck with. I can see these two starring in a different role playing game as the soul heroes, and there's just something about Phoebe's European artwork that I love. It's probably that smug face she's rocking holding that shield and uh, claw, that's an odd combination of equipment I have to say. Mystic Quest has no major side stories or side quests, the world building is basically non-existent, there's nothing much at all, you just go and do things, traveling the world map like a Super Mario World hub, as restricted and rigid as you can get. No chocobos, no airships, no boats until endgame and even that's just a cutscene, no submarine, no freedom in any sense, and it's only because Mystic Quest is about 8-10 to 10 hours long where all of this isn't as dreadful as it could have been, but that 8-10 to 10 hours is still going to feel like an eternity given the overly simple gameplay mechanics. For one thing, there are no traditional weapon, armor, and item stores in any village. Occasionally you'll run into a single NPC who sells you one item and only that one item, but that's about all you're getting. Everything is normally given to you through story progression and treasure chests you can find in dungeons. And those treasure chests you can find those potions and such in, they restock when you leave the area and head back inside so you're more than free to simply enter and exit an area as many times as you want to get your share of cure potions and refreshers. Huh, the refreshers are just a coke can, that's so odd, I didn't think the supposed medieval world had soda cans. or. Hotels for that matter with bright neon signs and a fucking rock band? Again, this is what I mean with Mystic Quest having fun taking the piss out of certain RPG tropes, but I do have to question what this game is trying to emulate here, Final Fantasy or Earthbound Beginnings? That's it though, in terms of items, you have potions to heal HP which grow more potent as you level up so they're never obsolete, there's heal pasta cure status effects, refreshes to recover from debuffs, and seeds to restore mana. Everything else you see here are key items you eventually nab as you complete the game, and new weapons and armor you find in dungeons are automatically equipped to Ben as soon as he finds them, slowly giving him additional defense and resistances to status effects. Uh, at the very least, inventory management isn't a problem in Mystic Quest, that is an accolade one I didn't think I'd be giving this game, but here we are. We're back to turn-based combat, and as far as that goes, it's fine, works about the same as the earlier games. Only two party members at once in this game though, which is laughable in any other title, but is more than enough within the confines of Mystic Quest, and you can either manually select commands with your partner, or set them to auto where they're just a glorified AI companion that's not bad in keeping your HP up when it's running lower using heal potions to cure status effects. In an already easy game, they go and give you an easy mode for battles anyway. But because you only have two party members, status effects can end a battle surprisingly fast or drag them out because of your limited formation. You're gonna hate instant death and petrification magic a lot because it's very possible that as you're trying to restore your partner back to normal, the enemy is getting their turn first, petrifying the remaining party member and there you go game over just like that. Although Mystic Quest does allow you to retry the battle without having to reload the whole save file, so that's a nifty feature, and I say that with no snide undertone, that is a legitimately great feature that I wish more RPGs of this age had. You can even save wherever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> Mystic Quest giving you save states before emulators became mainstream. Good shit, Mystic Quest. Even a broken clock is right twice a day or some shit like that, I don't know. 
Mystic Quest also gives you a decent variety of weapons to use as you progress through the game. A standard sword for slicing, an axe for chopping down possessed wood, explosives that can hit every enemy at once, and a claw that may not be extraordinarily strong, but it often debilitates enemies with a barrage of status effects. These weapons are also used in dungeon exploration too, removing obstacles like logs and stone walls, using the claw to climb certain walls or as a grappling hook, that's pretty cool. You can also just jump over things. The dungeon layouts are still incredibly simple, but I'll give the game this. They are certainly more interactive than dungeons from the other games, but only by a small margin since outside of these simple obstacles solved in the same manner every single time, you don't do anything else more creative in puzzle solving and the like. Ben is also capable of casting spells, very proficiently I might add. He's a fighter, a white mage, and a black mage rolled into one with none of the limitations of a red mage. Oh, I knew it was smart to say spell charges weren't possibly gone from good in the last video. Here they are, back again, giving you a limit on how many spells you can cast in a specific tier, but... None of that really matters in Mystic Quest, they give you a shitload of spell uses for every tier, and this is assuming you're even using spells at all if I'm being real. I mean spells are obnoxiously overpowered, especially if you know an enemy's elemental weakness. Hell, as soon as you get your first partner, you already have a one hit kill spell in the form of the life spell, which for reasons I can't ascertain kills every enemy that isn't immune to instant death in one hit. What? Why? <laughs> Are all these monsters secretly undead? Why does life kill things in one hit? It's so strange. Once you get the white and flare spells though, that's all you're spamming against these guys just to get a move on. And though these spells have the lowest charges, this is easily circumvented with seeds, remarkably cheap items you can soon purchase that completely restores your mana. Just like that, you got more room to spam these strong ass spells. But most enemies can just be as easily slain by using your basic ass sword, and I mean that. You could win so many battles in this game just by mashing the A button. It is utterly insane and brain dead like you wouldn't believe, but you better get used to it because Mystic Quest is mostly battles. This is the entire game. You travel to the nearby village to find a way inside the next dungeon, get a new buddy to temporarily aid you in your journey, you head inside the dungeon, you beat the boss, you get the crystal back onto the next area. Sometimes there's a mini dungeon before heading into the main one, but it's just an added step to an otherwise formulaic design. There are no random encounters if that sort of thing rides up your ass. You can pick and choose your battles for most of the time if they aren't you know, blocking the path entirely or invisible as part of a dungeon's gimmick. And if you feel you're lacking in experience points and all that, Mystic Quest has these optional battle arenas plastered all over the goddamn place where you go 10 rounds with enemy formations, also you can grind and maybe get some extra money that you really don't need considering how items respawn in chests like I mentioned earlier. Maybe if you want more seeds, that's a valid reason I guess. That's it though, that's the whole game. And it's boring. There was a point where I got so numb that I accidentally found myself using the exit spell when healing my party, and it worked me out of an already long dungeon, and I didn't even flinch. I just continued the routine. That's the thing with Mystic Quest. If you were to ask me if I think the game succeeded in being an entry-level RPG, then yes. I would say it did by virtue of things working as designed and for it being incredibly simple to pick up, but it's also so incredibly easy to put down. It is too simple. And yes, I know my viewpoint on this is skewed because Mystic Quest wasn't my first venture in the RPG genre, that was Final Fantasy IV. A game I think is more than beginner friendly without outright sacrificing the other qualities that define an RPG, Eastern or otherwise. It's more than just the gameplay, it's the world surrounding the gameplay, the story it tells, the characters involved. Mystic Quest only achieves the bare minimum in that aspect, shit, not even that I would say. And I think even if this were my first RPG, I would see that even at an early age. Back in my youth, I recall watching my uncle playing this from time to time and compared to Final Fantasy IV, which I also watched him play a whole bunch of back then, Mystic Quest wasn't hitting the same chords with me. I did like how enemies deteriorated the more damage you did to them, and with some of them it's pretty funny watching them how they're still trying to kick your ass even as they're literally falling apart. Very Monty Python vibes looking back. The rest of it didn't seem all that appealing to me, the look of it, how it handled. The music though was awesome, and I know some of you were waiting for me to get into that, trust me, I know. Mystic Quest had no business going this hard on the soundtrack as it did, it is the one thing I have nothing really negative to say anything about. A joint venture between Ryuji Sasai and Yasuhiro Kawakami, Mystic Quest delivers some great upbeat battle themes, the boss theme alone is worth a listen.
And the dungeon and town pieces are damn good too, one of my favorites being the track that plays in the Falls Basin. Nothing is on the same level as what Naboi Uematsu has done in my opinion, but this soundtrack has a different vibe for a different game, so I enjoy it for different reasons. It's great, give it a listen, you don't even have to touch the game. There's no reason at all to play this. Mystic Quest was an attempt, but it was a failed attempt. The game isn't awful, but it is dreadfully one note, and did not achieve what Square wanted in terms of getting new players to the market. All it did was confuse already established Final Fantasy fans who probably felt a little insulted to boot, and I think they were the only folks who purchased this game in the first place. But Square would thankfully learn from this and decided to just release mainline Final Fantasy games as intended from this point forward, with no other alterations to the formula to cater to newcomers and all that. If it sells, it sells. Though I say that and the next game in the lineup wasn't given an American release initially, fearing it may be too difficult. Shit, Square was like, fuck it, just don't release this one here in America. Mr. Quest didn't end up doing shit for us, so don't bother. Well, when I return to Final Fantasy, that's the game I'm going to be looking at next, the second Super Nintendo entry, Final Fantasy V. Was it really that difficult that they wouldn't consider an international release initially? Well, we're going to find out when we get to it. And before I head off for today, I really want to thank you guys for joining me in this adventure so far. I've been wanting to do Final Fantasy games for a long time, and the amount of love I see you guys giving me in the comments and social media is awe-inspiring, to say the least. I'm even hearing from a few of you that you're considering giving Final Fantasy a shot because of this marathon. And that right there, that's, that's kind of the entire point of this channel. You know, if there's something I want you to play, I hope you consider it, and I hope you love some of these games as much as I do. Maybe even more. Now, maybe even Mystic Quest can offer you something the others can't, though. I highly doubt that. Anyway, we're getting close to some anniversaries here if you catch my drift, and I want to shift gears for a bit to properly acknowledge them. You remember how I said it was a goal of mine to eventually remake those old SGB reviews into proper versus videos? Well, I think it's about time we work on that. Sonic celebrating his 30th anniversary this year, and Metroid celebrating its 35th. So what say you? Ready to head back in time? To another world? Something something Sonic R reference? I'll see you guys next time. As always, thank you all for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask if you decide to go outside, get vaccinated if possible. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.